There's no business like show business, but there's no business I know better than video games. But that doesn't mean I don't like some theatre in my life. I've seen two musicals, by the way, that's just what it says in the script. In recent years, musicals have gotten increasingly popular with the masses, with the likes of Hamilton, Beetlejuice, Hades Town, and even SpongeBob the Musical becoming massive hits over the old school shows. Now pre-existing properties are becoming successful musicals, it isn't that difficult to imagine a video game being turned into an all-singing, all-dancing spectacular on stage at some point in the future. Now you may say that this is a very self-indulgent list on the part of our writer, and you'd be correct. But she's been stuck inside for the last couple of months and half existing entirely off musicals and Jacob's cheddars, so cut her some slack. Anyway. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are 10 video games that would make great musicals. Number 10. Undertale. The story of a child who falls into the underworld and is met with a large cast of monsters may seem to be a bit of a tall task to put on stage, especially considering a lot of the late game is very meta about it being a video game. But by manipulating the three ways to play the game, the pacifist, genocide, and neutral routes where you can kill no one, kill everyone, and kill some people, to create a more coherent plot, it could potentially work as a single narrative thread. Additionally, lots of Toby's original songs could easily be reworked to suit lyrics and dance breaks, or even have brand new songs written in. When it comes to the staging and costumes, the majority of the characters are not in any way human, ranging from skeletons and ghosts to fish ladies, giant rabbits and whatever this is. While it may be tempting to resort to giant mascot costumes, there have been a few recent shows that have gone more abstract with turning cartoon characters into more believable human casts. If the Spongebob musical can capture Spongebob's square look with a pair of dungarees, Sandy's spacesuit with an afro, and bring Squidward to life with an extra pair of legs, then it's possible to have a papyrus that doesn't look like a cheap Halloween costume. Cosplayers have been doing it for years, after all. Number 9. Bioshock. The first two games in the Bioshock series can be summed up with the single word, grimy. Boom. Set in the underwater, abandoned, failed utopia of Rapture, the first game follows a man, Jack, through the mouldy and leaky city to find its leader, Andrew Ryan, whilst also battling insane surgeons, artists, and scientists. Prime material for a musical. The plot itself isn't that complicated, with Jack, after his plane crashes, finding himself guided through the city by the mysterious Atlas and defeating the numerous insane citizens along the way. While musicals are usually seen as fluffy or melodramatic, there has been a resurgence of grittier shows, meaning that the scariness of the plot wouldn't have to be toned down. In fact, it could easily be increased with some more fleshing out of the secondary villains and the monstrous inhabitants of Rapture. With only three main characters in Jack, Andrew, Ryan, Atlas, and a handful of named secondary characters, this show could be carried by the large ensemble cast of Splicers. Like a demented Phantom of the Opera, they are already colourfully dressed in tattered and twisted outfits. It's their manic movements easily being reimagined into choreography as they dance around Jack and Ragdoll as he defeats them one by one. Turns out rabbit masks and lace dresses aren't particularly good against bullets or electricity. Who'd have thought? Number 8. God of War. From Arthurian legend with Camelot to modernised reimaginings of Greek mythology with My Fair Lady and Hades Town, mythology, folk, and fairy tales have always been an inspiration for musicals. Even Peter Pan, which was originally written as a stage production before becoming a novel, continues to entertain people every Christmas panto season. Now, calling God of War mythology is a bit of a stretch. First, you need to cut off my head. Wait, what? But it is definitely heavily influenced by it, although it is hardly what you might call faithful to the original source material. Ancient Greek society may have worked out slightly differently, after all, if all of their gods had been slaughtered by a raging man-mountain in one fell swoop. However, while the first few games are a more furious beat-em-up through the Greek pantheon, the 2018 remake has more heart and a stronger emotional core through Kratos mourning the death of his wife and bonding with his son. A few nice ballads could definitely be made out of that. Also, there have been no major musicals using any of the hundreds of stories of the chaotic lives of the Norse gods. Not even the one where Thor wears a wedding dress to beat up a giant who stole his hammer, which personally would be the first one I'd adapt. Number 7. The Legend of Zelda 
The Legend of Zelda series has never been tied down to one linear narrative across its games, with almost every title bringing in a new version of the characters into the world. It sure is boring around here. My boy. While this may make it extremely difficult for video game lore experts to pin down any kind of cohesive timeline, it makes it extremely easy to fit in new versions of the characters without having to follow any of the plots of the previous games. You have the helpful little green boy Link, his BFF forever Zelda, and the big mean guy Xanadu, I mean Ganondorf, who wants to rule the world of Hyrule. And that's all you need for a good Zelda plot. Bringing leafy green fantasy to the stage has been done a few times before in shows such as the short-lived Tuck Everlasting and Lord of the Rings musical, and the more successful Into the Woods. The hardest decision would, of course, be will Link sing? With a fan musical of Portal 2 surviving without a speaking main character, it is doable, and considering the last time he said anything other than huh, still haunting the fandom to this day, it may be best if he keeps his trap shut. I just saved you from Ganon! You did not. I won! Number 6. Five Nights at Freddy's Feed me pizza! Horror musicals are another surprising genre that non-musical fans don't really realise exist, but there are several. The Little Shop of Horrors, Adam's Family, Carrie, Jekyll and Hyde, and even Beetlejuice if you consider Goss to be horror. Stay away from me, Mona! Calling Five Nights at Freddy's an indie game anymore feels bizarre, considering how saturated the market is with merchandise, fan costumes, and knockoff games, both fan made and professional. However, with the movie still in perpetual development, as it probably will be until the end of time, a stage production could potentially prove to be a hit. FNAF has always had a certain element of being tongue in cheek, or rather, tongue in endoskeleton, and an ultra serious take would probably miss the mark. However, like Little Shop of Horrors, a FNAF musical could utilise puppetry to create the movements of the animatronics, although they would probably have to talk this time. Including characters like the Purple Guy, Phone Guy, and the Afton family would bring more characters to the stage than just a single security guard. The animatronic characters could establish themselves as individual personalities and really <laughs> come out of their shell. Number 5. Red Dead Redemption 2 Ok, so Arthur Morgan or any of the other hardened cowboys wouldn't really be seen dead dancing around joyfully in a Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical, but as I said previously, serious musicals aren't necessarily rare. A musical version of Red Dead wouldn't have to be as comedic or light-hearted as Oklahoma, but that show would provide a good framework in terms of setting, as well as the more serious Fiddler on the Roof, which isn't exactly a western, but it's still about a dusty farmstead owned by a man with a beard, so close enough I say. Horses and other animals have been brought to the stage before, so having the animals and the scenery of the Wild West transferred to a theatre wouldn't be that hard, though it might be difficult to recreate the ragdolling during the rousing and emotional ballad, My Horse Keeps On Running Into Trees. <laughs> but who would we get to play Rooty Tooty McCowboy Shooty himself, Arthur Morgan? Well, the good news is everyone's favourite PE teacher turned stage and screen star, Huge Jacked Man, is returning to the theatre after hanging up his claws, so he would definitely get the pick of the bunch for bearded cowboy characters. Number 4. Assassin's Creed well, this one is kind of obvious. The Assassin's Creed series has covered a vast range of time periods, from the Crusades and Pirates to Ancient Egypt and 16th century Italy, but the setting that seems all too familiar, in a musical sense anyway, is Assassin's Creed Unity, following a bunch of plucky young men through revolutionary France. Well, okay, Assassin's Creed covers the French Revolution of 1789, while Les Miserables' June Revolution takes place 33 years later in 1832, but that makes it even better. Have it act as a prequel. Then, after Assassin's Creed the musical ends, the audiences can venture over the roads to the other theatre to see how it all ended up almost half a century later. But with less of this. Problem solved. If Assassin's Creed didn't want to compete with the second longest running and fifth highest grossing musical of all time, then there are plenty of other historic periods to choose from. Fittingly, there is already a musical that covers the topic of historical assassins, literally called Assassins, which has a number of famous American murderers meet each other in a shooting gallery. Additionally, there have been several other musicals based upon real-life historical events or time periods, including War Horse, Bonnie and Clyde, and of course, Hamilton. Number 3. Resident Evil Michael Jackson's thriller really set the bar quite high for the quality of singing and dancing that zombies are expected to achieve, when in reality they're slow, shambling, and don't have a particularly good sense of rhythm or personal style. Ooh, bin bag chic. Love it. 
While the Umbrella Corporation isn't limited to creating zombie plagues, the majority of the things they do create are very intent on destroying everything they find, having to be stopped before they wage their carnage across the planet. Because of Umbrella Corp's versatility, the plot wouldn't necessarily have to be taken straight from one of the games, instead taking inspiration from them while making it into an entirely new plot. Aiding the restricted nature of the theatre, most of the Resident Evil games take place in a central location, either a mansion, a laboratory, or underground tunnels and sewers. Bringing an apocalyptic event to the stage isn't a small feat, especially when attempting to create the feeling that the threat is all-encompassing while being confined inside a theatre. Little Shop of Horrors, Evil Dead the Musical, and Star Kids the Guy Who Didn't Like Musicals have all managed to create a convincing end-of-the-world threat with either zombies, hive-mind body snatchers, or man-eating alien plants, all of which sound like something that the Umbrella Corporation would have a hand in. Number 2. Aliens Colonial Marines now, I know what you're thinking. Why Aliens Colonial Marines of all games? Why not any of the other numerous alien fighting games that have been released over the years? Well, it got your attention, didn't it? Would you like to look at my jam? Since its disastrous launch in 2013 and years of ridicule over a single typo in its AI coding, I think it's high time that this video game reclaimed some of its street cred. And it's totally not that I'm putting it on this list because I'm dying for an alien musical and this was the first video game version I thought of. Oh, wait, there was a much better one, wasn't there? It's so menacing. Yeah. Lighting effects can do amazing things on stage, making people appear as if out of nowhere and hiding things that they don't want you to see. I can't actually see it, it's so dark. It's really dark, isn't it? While not a musical, the Woman in Black stage play is amazing at making you jump at literally nothing and also ruined my childhood, but that's not the point. And like Alien, the ambience of the setting is the main source of the scares. A lot of larger theatres have impressive set pieces surrounding the stage, with Matilda's letter blocks and SpongeBob's Rube Goldberg machines. Having the stage for Alien surrounded by chains and pipes will not only set the scene, but also hide the Alien throughout the show. You aren't just watching the characters fight the alien after all, you yourself are trapped with it too. Do they not actually go in the vents? He couldn't be bothered, look, there he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Cuphead. Inspired by the Fleischer and Walt Disney Studios 1930s animations, Cuphead, like Undertale, is defined by its music, the collector's edition even coming with vinyl records of the soundtrack. Because of this, and the vast cast of colourful characters and an overarching threat of the devil and his henchman King Dice, adapting Cuphead for the stage would be relatively easy. With its swing-style music, a Cuphead musical would harken back to the old Top Hat and Tails musicals of, well, Top Hat and Anything Goes, as well as fitting in nicely alongside the musical Mac and Mabel, which is set around the same time period in the more human-centric Hollywood. The run and guns and the boss battles that take up the majority of the game would have to be changed for more dialogue-based interactions rather than having the main characters constantly shooting at each other with their fingers, and the characters which are all trapped in contracts with the devil could have their backstories not so much expanded as created in the first place. While only a few of the characters are what we would call human, the same abstract costuming used in Spongebob the Musical, The Lion King, or pretty much any Disney stage musical could recreate the various crockery, vegetables, frogs, robots, dragons, giant flowers, and blimp moon witches that inhabit the world. And that's our list. What video game would you like to be adapted to the stage? Let us know in the comments below. You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon. Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.